I was offered a show with uh, an artist that I didn't connect with morally. Okay. Like I, did, I didn't, li- I didn't like their uh, their mm. their stance. And this was a bigger artist, bigger than me, and still is uh, bigger than me. Um, but I had known them, and I and I had worked with them before. But since things have come out, you know, da da da. And they offered me this show, and they're like, "Don't worry, no one's even gonna promote that. Like, I'm gonna be there." And da 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 da. And I was just like, "Okay, I could say yes." Um, you know, take the check, you know, just shake the hands and hope that it doesn't get out. You know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of times that's what you do. You, 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 you're like, okay, you know, whatever. But I was like, you know what, Matt? Like, you don't really want to do that. And, it's, and money is it's not about the money. You right. know what I mean? Because you can make the money. So I said no. Uh, they did not take it well because um, I was just like, hey, like, could you, you at least? Why. I yeah. said, I was like, hey, this is what's going on. And if you could talk to me about it, maybe I could like have a better understanding. So then I could like have some, right. foot, you know, place to stand on. And they didn't, they had it, they wanted none of it. And so they just were like, whatever. And I felt really bad about it. But then the next day I get a call and it's Ludacris's team. Whoa. And they wanted me to open for them at Mystic Lake. Welcome back, friends. Today we are at Reverb Music Festival 2024, and I'm here with the first artist to show up. I was the first artist to show up. I paint. There you go. Nice. I don't make music, but the first other artists who are actually going to be on stage today showed up, and we have Nur, D, and DJ Hayes. Yeah. You guys are like inseparable, right? We're the team. Yeah. It's the the tag team. We we hang out a lot. Yeah. It's it's like (laughs) Tom and Jerry. I don't know which one I am. Probably the browner of the two. (laughs) Oh, man. That means you, I don't Jerry. know if I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, we out here. In your own words, you can go in turns. I don't care who goes first. Who are you and what are you passionate about? Hey, no, DJ Hayes. Yeah, so um, my name is, again, DJ Hayes. Uh, Hayes being my last name. Um, I'm just very passionate about uh, hip-hop, R&B music, and, like, the culture surrounding it in general. Um, I... I really like the like so other than DJing I'm also a producer and honestly oh, cool. and you produce all of his music not no, all of it but mo- most of it I oh, mean a, oh, wow. a lot of it a and lot. uh I do like producing in the sense of like the original sense of producing rather yeah. than just beat making sure most of his stuff I I would say I produce um and so what's I the difference the between well. original producing versus beat making just kind of like working with an artist in the studio to kind of like getting a concept of what they're looking for, like what they're trying to end up with what their end goal is in yeah. their creative process and then just kind of guiding them to that point Yeah, because there's a lot of people who make beats that also produce, but they are separate things, right? Because there's people that make beats and then just sell the beat to the artist and and then their hands off. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And and some people call that a producer, and I would maybe kind of call that a producer. But somebody still has to finish the project. But then you have somebody that they're working with in the studio that's going, okay, we're going to do these harmonies here. We're going to do these vocal layers here. Mm -hmm. We're going to structure the song like this. And that in itself is also a producer. So who gets the producer cred? In that situation, uh, <laughs> generally, the guy who makes the the person who makes the beat oh, uh, okay. ends up getting the producer credit mm, um, sure. because that's kind of shifted more into at least in like the hip hop pop R and B genre is kind of shifted into the yeah into what producing is now. Um, the other guy you generally see is like the executive producer or okay. something Ooh. like that. Um, yeah, does he wear a tie? He might. Got a suit. <laughs> or they might. They got a suit, yeah. you know what I mean? Rolex watch. Yeah. Uh, I heard Rolexes are dead. Yeah. That's yeah. why That's why they have them. Oh, okay. It makes sense. <laughs> All right. Nerd D. Nerd D, Damn. it's your turn. Who oh, are you and what are you up, everybody? About? It's your boy Nerd D, your seventh favorite hip-hop person. How you doing? Hope you've been drinking your milk, taking your vitamins. I am passionate about music, community, uh, professional wrestling, uh, Fight Club, the movie, uh, the movie, and That's the club, a good movie. and the club. Yes, and there's a club. <laughs> uh, I'm not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm excited about performing. I, I'm passionate about uh, creating memories on stage and in my music, and so that's kind of what I've been doing since shoot 2018. 
So you're more passionate about the actual performance side rather yeah. than the music making side? I love I love making music. Don't get me wrong. Right. I get lost in the weeds in making a beat or not making a beat, like putting my spin on like something that Ryan's made, something that someone else has made. I love creating. I love crafting. But it's there's they're different things. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Like uh, filmmaking and film watching are just two different things. Yeah. Um, so I love watching a good movie just like everybody else. I like performing. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's yeah. giving the it, – it's a mixture of both things. It's the work we did in the studio, but it's also how am I engaging with you? The same song might need to be performed differently in front of a different group of fans, right. depending on how the energy is. So it's a lot more of a dance or like a – I used to be a server, so it was like a dinner rush. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like sure. it's, it's one yeah. thing to just like kind of make food and like hand it out to like a few people. Yeah. It's another thing to be like, yo, we got 10,000 people out here. Yeah. Let's cook them some – let's cook them a meal. Yeah, it's a different <laughs> – it's a, it's different. It's like an exchange of energy. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. like a adrenaline rush. And that's what I like. It, yeah. it, it, it reminds me of like surfing. It, it reminds, like you're, you're fighting with something that's bigger than you. Sure. You know what yeah, I mean? that's not totally in your control. Yeah, you but know, you're riding it. Especially at something it. like a music festival. You guys have to kick things off pretty much. Much, yep, right so yep, you have yeah. to try to build the energy for yep. later we're setting the tone for the day yeah you know and a lot of people come in and they have uh, preconceived notions about how the show's gonna go how they're how they're like the entire weekend's gonna be like you are really setting the tone for the only weekend this weekend in 2024 that will ever exist yeah. If you think about it, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, this this weekend in August will never happen again. Yeah. So, like, we are setting the tone for what could be, like, a core memory yeah. in somebody's life. Well, I think it will be based on the lineup alone. Yeah. You know, yeah, just for today. The lineup is crazy. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. No, We've never had anything like this in Eau Claire before. It's, it's nuts. Well, and you guys, you're from the Minnesota, like, Minneapolis yeah, area. Yeah, Twin Cities out here. Hey, yeah. I actually grew up in Chippewa Falls. Oh, I went to high word. school at Chai High. Yeah. Oh. Let's see. Cool, but you, you graduated to the big artsy city of Minneapolis. Although it's now we become the like city. boutique little city. That's yeah, all artsy. Yeah, Eau Claire. Eau Claire is picking it up. Every yeah. time I come back here, there's a whole bunch of new stuff like down on like Water Street. How far? How long ago did you move? Uh, I moved. Oh, how long has it been? I don't know. I didn't know you then. <laughs> and uh, it would have been in 2014, so 10 years now. Oh, Dang. Wow. yeah. Okay, what year did you graduate? Uh, 2014. Oh, so yeah. I'm the old one here. Wait, how wow. old are you, nerdy? I'm a thousand years old. Oh, okay, you're one of those mysterious. Yes. I was mysterious. <laughs> nah, nah, I'm thirty. I'm oh, thirty-three. Word. I'm thirty-three. I got to remember the three. I'm thirty-three. I'm a '90s baby. Cool. Yeah, That's I got one year on you. I was I was born in the spring of '90. Oh, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah. All right. Growing All right. up, I was like, wish I was born in the '80s. That's and now what, I'm like, nah. I wish I was born in 2000. Right. Exactly. <laughs> no, I like I like being born in the '90s. We had good cartoons. Yeah, uh, the best well, cartoons. You know what I mean? Shout no. out to Dexter's Lab. Shout out to Powerpuff Girls. Shout out to Johnny Dude, Bravo. Dude, that's where all my art started from. <laughs> Was I the what I used to do was I would make stencils for grip tape because I owned a skateboard shop for ten years nice. and I like always skateboard. Yeah. So I would make multicolored stencils and they'd Ooh. all be like nineties cartoons and like Pokemon and like and That's I did a up. Dexter one, I did Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage. I did, yeah, yeah, I did a bunch of those Ooga, and I would booga, spray booga. that's the graffiti I would spray. Yeah. And that's the only thing I've ever been arrested for. And now I'm like <laughs> paid by the city to paint murals and stuff. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. That's a yeah. full it's, that's a full that. come around. It I is, love that. Yeah, it's dope. So what specifically is your role then today? How how long are you going to be on stage? How, what involvement do you have? Yeah, so I'm DJing with uh, Kalia and Peli, and the, there's there's two friends of ours who we we rock with every now and then, cool. and uh, yeah, they hit me up to come to come fill in and uh, DJ them for them today, and he's got a song featuring with both of them, so he's going to hop on and do a verse. Yeah, no, I got my verse ready to go. It's in the Naruto remix. Yeah, sick dude. Yeah, I got so a little Naruto tattoo. Right hey, here. I got oh, believe it. it. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> that's I got a, a, a Ninja Kingler. Oh, well. yeah. I got some nerdy tattoos. Oh, there yeah. we go. Hey. <laughs> so you're just performing one song yeah, with performing each? performing one song, and we're just kind of like rocking out. I'm yeah. excited. Yeah. I get I get to observe and view and be around. So it's, it's a really good opportunity. He gets for a me. chill day today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you guys worked with both those artists quite a few times then? Yes. Oh, yeah. We've done yeah. A, a I've few never DJed like a full set for them before oh. until today so we're, we're trying and it this out. will be a big crowd for yeah. both of them yeah it's, it's crazy i'm excited this is a really cool show it was cool that they asked us to come be a part of it yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's what connection is all about mm -hmm. when you do like the music industry is all about figuring out how you get in mm -hmm. and so having cool people that you can work with is like 
invaluable Absolutely. yeah well i think that helps with festivals quite a bit because you meet bigger artists and stuff too but not just the artists you mm. meet everybody who works with them their exactly. whole crew. yeah, yeah exactly. it's not like networking doesn't have to be a gross term you know what i mean it's um, networking in like a natural cool way of just meeting like-minded people that are also mm -hmm. creating it's like Facts. hey we're all in the same place we're all playing on the same stage today it kind of brings like a level of of it, equalness to everybody it's like summer act. camp yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. you this is a little bit of moment get to know people some people are cool some people you know you know you learn to click yeah. and then those relationships might you know change yeah. and evolve into something else later down down the road yeah that's why i tell everybody hey be nice Dude, like, it's not that be hard chill. to be nice. Be nice to you know everybody. I mean? nah, yeah. You know how talk. many shows we've gotten off of just being nice and they didn't even know what our music was? Yeah, that. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, though, like, because you don't know who that person is, what role they may have. Yeah. And even if they don't have a significant role, maybe somebody they do know. Yeah. Like, you never know what, if you piss somebody off and somebody doesn't like you, you don't know what opportunities you miss out just because that person said something negative to one person who then Speak. heard something bad about you by this other person. Yep. Versus if you're just nice to everybody, it opens up a lot of doors. I have not met that many successful people that are jerks exactly it's you hard have to, to get, get there you, that's you, know what I mean. you had it's hard to get yeah. nice. that success if you're not yeah. nice unless you're like the michael jordan of what you do yeah but you know? and even then there's even so then, many good people uh, though you yep. know what i mean yeah. you like have to people have to vouch for you and all that so yeah. how, did, how did you guys meet because it sounds like you guys are like besties basically yeah oh, we are besties <laughs> oh killer this so uh you tell them how we met he had got into <laughs> into doing some into doing hip hop music in 2018. Did mm -hmm. I get that right? Yeah, that's right. Um, and I had already been in the Twin Cities for like four years. I was DJing and producing around the hip hop scene, and uh, he started in a like a, it was an open mic competition for like Go Radio. That it was called Shut Up and Rap. Shout out Go 95.3. Shout out to them. R.I.P. R.I.P. Um, they uh, and he was winning like all the time, and that's I right. was like I thought I knew everybody who was doing this in the Twin Cities and they kept putting his tag up and I'm like, who is this dude? He's wild. He's all you're doing like professional wrestling intros for an open mic, <laughs> like promo videos. Yeah, no, I was and I was lot. like, this dude's wild. <laughs> and so uh, we got booked on a show together. I was just the DJ for the night and he did a set and I thought it was awesome. So I get booked out the vote show specifically. Get out the vote at Honey, mm -hmm. thrown by CMJ. Shout out CMJ. Chris. But Michael you were Jensen. hired separately for that? Yeah. And, oh, I was cool. just DJing for everybody that night. Word. And then like cool. in between sets. And he was one of the sets, and he impressed. He only had like 15 minutes, but he was the most impressive artist on the night by like far. Sure. I was like, th that was crazy. Specifically from the performance standpoint. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I can't believe you guys let him go first. Sure. <laughs> that was yeah. wrong of you. Yeah, everyone can't follow up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I booked him on a show that I was throwing at the time called Bars and Brews. Yeah. With my buddy Jordan Weller uh, at a place called Day Block Brewing in Minneapolis. Mm hmm. And we just clicked on stage right away. You know, I always had a thing when I was doing, I used to spend a lot of time being the house DJ for hip hop shows sure. around the Twin Cities. And it was just kind of like, I mean, five hours is a lot, long time to be on stage. So I'm probably yeah. going to pick a set to go take a smoke break <laughs> or yeah. something, right? Yeah. But if I really you. like what you're doing, I'll scratch. I'll cut up your tracks. We'll, we'll make it happen on the fly. Yeah. Because um, I love improv. Improv is like my my go-to thing I, i'm good at making stuff up on the fly yeah um honestly i think your job is so like it's not underage the wrong word underappreciated because i saw i saw um my favorite rapper sunreal do you know that that art yep. music artist it's my all-time favorite music artist and i got to interview him um last year not the fine line where was it amsterdam <laughs> Oh, just like yeah, saw, nice. he saw him announce his tour whatever anyway so i went kicked it with him interviewed him backstage and soul was his opener from seattle if you know that rapper yep. uh -huh. he's awesome well sunreal's dj was on stage with him but wasn't when soul performed and it was such a drastic difference in level of energy and yep. quality of a show because of what the dj brought to it versus soul when he's just like putting his thing on his laptop to perform yep. it's there's just it's not different well yeah. and i think i think it, it, the reason it, it, it goes is 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 seeming underappreciated because sometimes it is some, some we've been in spaces it where it is, is and yeah. we've been in spaces where it's not yep um it's a subconscious thing that the the, yeah. the average consumer or show goer doesn't know what a dj does right they just know that when the dj's there it's different it's better mm -hmm. or when there's a good dj it's better they can't tell you why but right. they just know that when it's better. You yeah. know what I mean? I can so I think I it's some kind of like a to that Because I know that a good DJ allows an MC to be their full self. And so it is an enhancement 
it's like comic book reference. Mm -hmm. Blue lanterns were great with green lanterns because they increase their ability. Yeah, sure. and that's what a, D a good DJ yeah, we're, will do. We're, that. we're nerds out here. If this is a video game, I'm the support role. <laughs> exactly. I'm out here throwing out bumps. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because yeah. <laughs> if you have to stop every five seconds to like, oh, that's not the right tracker. Oh, I only have but this much time. And da 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 da. It, it, you, it's a little bit of a take back every time. But then. So then they go, oh, wow, this person's really cool. And a good MC will constantly throw that energy back to their DJ yeah. Yeah. as respect. It's like tipping out your, you know, your kitchen. It's like kick, tick, tipping out your bar staff. You I know? feel like there's a lot of people that can't swallow their ego enough, though, for they, that type of a situation, it's right? Wild. Because they yeah. they get enough notoriety or whatever that they don't want to just be in the background of this other person. Mm. You know what I mean? Plus, I also got to wonder, like, Sunreal's DJ, I can't remember his name off the top of my head right now, which I feel horrible because nicest dude. Um, but like he's right there. Why wouldn't he also do it at least improv wise with Soul? I'm assuming because he's not getting paid to do that, but yeah, it would well, have added to the performance. Also, mm. some some artists, honestly, especially in today's day and age, are really uncomfortable rapping over a DJ scratching. Sure, sure. They're not they're not able to do it because it's an X to, factor. There's they're not able to keep There's something time. different. Yeah, cool. yeah. Okay. And so a lot of times, like if I'm just the house DJ for the night and I have no idea who you are. I might not scratch over your tracks because, A, I don't want to mess your setup. I don't know if you've ever heard that before, Right. first of all. And I don't want to mess your setup, and I don't want you to be upset with me because you weren't expecting me or you didn't want me to do that. Yeah. You okay. know? Um, so it's yeah. just everybody wants different things. That's why him and I click so well because when, when we met, I had come from working with previous artists who really did not want me to do any of the stuff that I know how to do is kind of yeah. just like a play the track and stand there right. type of deal. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do that because I spent all this time getting good at this other stuff. I'm not going to just and stand money. Here. Yeah. yeah. And money. But when I met him, he was like, yo, I want you to do everything you like doing because I love it. And yeah. I was like, all right, this is probably going to work well, because, out. Because like, I liked, you know, I, I grew up with like the Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff. Yeah. There's like a communal aspect to their act. And yeah, Will Smith eventually kind of just becomes Will Smith, you know, as, as we know, but they never stop being cool. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like every time he brings them out, I just think it's more fun. And so those are the rappers that I, that's the kind of rappers I listen to. Yeah. And so for me, I was like, well, yeah, of course I'd want to do that. I can just press play on a thing. Well, dude, there's, <laughs> well, the thing is, is like music has changed a lot, especially in hip hop, where so many people are doing so many filters to their voices and they're doing so much on the computer that instead of like going to open mics and kind of like learning, they're just yep. like putting out music yep. and then things end up taking off, you know, but then they've never really performed. Yo, it's because of the new that. way that you break. It's yeah. right. it's TikTok. It's 100%. It really it's, is. It's yes. TikTok because yeah. the new way you break is most of these people will literally just write a hook. Mm -hmm. yep. They'll put it up on TikTok, and if the hook goes viral, they'll then write, they'll write the rest of the they'll song. Write a verse to but it. a lot of the times, you go listen to the full version of these songs, and like, the verses good. are bad. Yeah. Because the it, verses it are matter. really bad, but the hook right. is really good. Yeah. Or you go to their show... It's vocal tracks all over in the track. They don't know how to perform their song yeah. because they're not a performer. Or they're playing the, their vocals behind them yeah. and their mic's turned down. Yep. yep. Seen a lot of we that. We had this. Uh, I was doing this show. I was reopening a venue in Minneapolis. And this guy, uh, wonderful, talented young cat, he was on the bill. So I was headlining and they were one of the openers. This person had over 500,000 TikTok followers. Whoa. So like more than half a million. Yep. Yeah. And they were sitting on the stairs weird not in the green room and i went over to them and i was like hey you okay you cool you doing all right and they're like i've never performed in front of people and this is like Whoa. a sold out 700 cap room yeah <laughs> and so this person who regularly creates content for almost five, for over half a million people had never done it in front of people before yeah. and like there is there are two different skills totally yeah. you know what i mean and so nowadays it's like well if i can get the one maybe i don't need the other and maybe that's right to a certain extent i mean hey i don't i'm not chapel Roan. like i don't know that like, you yeah. go from one to the other seamlessly it just kind of depends on like sure. well, how i feel like it depends on how you get into music are yeah. you getting into music as a content creator or are you getting, getting into, into music, music as, as a musician, musician who wants to make content those are very sure. different because it's different because a musician already knows how to perform yeah. right well, yeah, because they probably go to a lot of shows, and that's what mm -hmm. inspired them to want to exactly. do in the first place, right? Because that's what I want. I want a thousand. I want like thousands of people in the in the real, in right. like in a physical space. That's what I grew up wanting. Yeah. But some people they grew up wanting the the views. Like mm -hmm. that's what they are looking for. Yeah. And if they can get that, that's great. I think that's an awesome way to create a career mm -hmm. if that's what you want. I want bodies. Well, I think but that's like the new both, version though. of yeah. the studio artist. Yeah. yeah. Is like yeah. a TikTok oh, sure, artist, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But you have to be able to do both. 
Eventually. Like, there's a lot of people that are really good performers that aren't making it because they don't have numbers either. Yep. Like, you know, I'm sure if you guys are in Minneapolis, you know Landon, right? Landon Conrath? Yeah, mm, I heard no. the name, but I don't know. See, them Landon personally. Conrath, like, got ridiculous Spotify numbers. Like, he was hitting over a million monthly listeners Jeez. in Minneapolis. Wow. Like, nuts, dude. Shout he's like a, pop, like a pop singer, okay. basically. Like gotcha. pop, uh, pop, pop indie. Yeah, I'll show him to you. He's, he's dope. Dope. Um, but he only had, I don't even know if he has 10,000 followers on Instagram, Having up, getting a million streams a month, See, right? That's what and it is. And so yeah. he was, um, you know, booking his tours because he's tour touring all over the country and running into this issue all the time with venues of like, can't get this venue to book him even though he has all these listeners because they're just looking at his socials yep. so I think it's something where like you ha it's part of the game that you have to learn how to play like with this show yep. like it'll get like this show's on the radio dope that has however many 500 to 1000 listeners at a time right so yeah. that's that's awesome um, and then on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and YouTube the full episodes like it'll get a decent number of people that watch it and, and listen to it mm -hmm. but the number of people that will see a short form drastically different number dude yep. drastically i was yep. doing the numbers from the last like five episodes and the actual full length will get anywhere from maybe 700 to 1500 downloads between like apple spotify youtube not including the radio yeah but the lowest of the last five episodes when i was adding up all the views from all the socials was seventy thousand. yep Th that's where all the people are going to come from. So it's you have different. to be able you have to, to know how to figure both. it out. Yeah, it's a different, it's a completely different system, a completely different animal. And in the music industry, most, especially in the independent world, most, I'll say half, half of the people farm their streams. I mean, yeah. So that's sure. why, like, the music industry goes, I don't care what your Spotify numbers are because you could just be buying those. I think there's, a, yeah, I guess, I don't, yeah. I'm not going to call anybody out, but I've noticed yeah. that in Minnesota specifically, that there's a lot of, like, a lot of fake stuff going on, but we'll stay on the positive. So tell me more yeah. about your uh, about your musical journey, though, because I yeah. you, I really don't know that much about you. Literally met you, you know, 15 minutes ago when yep. you walked we in. Just walked in. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, dude, we're gonna be hanging out all day. Let's not make this awkward. Let's be friends. Let's hang out. You know yeah, what I mean? But exactly. tell, tell me, like, give us a little bit of the story arc of your. Yeah, career. I'll give you the I'll give you the hits. You know, yeah. I'll, give you the, I'll get you the highlights. So I was uh, in rock and roll for a while before I transitioned over to hip hop. I've always loved hip hop. It's part of, you know, black culture, so I've been, you know, into it. But like I just was doing rock and roll specifically. Singing or like drama? Or like uh, I was singing and I played keys. Oh, cool. You know what I mean? We had a band, we had many different names. Some of them were really great. Uh, <laughs> like Saving Vinyl City, that's a dope name. Yeah. Uh, also, we also tried out the Back Alley Boys, which is not a great name. <laughs> I did not hear that one <laughs> oh, before. Oh yeah, yeah, no. It was on the list. That's bad. Yep. Yeah. We also wanted to call ourselves Save the Cheerleader because we really loved heroes, NBC's heroes. But then I said I didn't want to be 40 years old saying save the cheerleader. I thought that was weird. So we <laughs> did a different we, – we, we went and As eventually landed on Black Genesis because we were like Genesis, with, uh, but if Phil Collins was black, <laughs> <laughs> which was the concept. Yeah. <laughs> so we, I did that for a while. Yeah. Um, but at the, you know, the early 2000s, being a fat black guy in pop rock – was not like the vibe, yeah. you know what I mean? They yeah. weren't, just, people just weren't into it, especially in the Midwest, it just wasn't hitting. And I found that I had to do so many industry things, you know what I mean? Like do the right, like say the right thing, wear the right outfit, blah, blah, blah. And it was just, it was so boring and it wasn't my thing, it wasn't my style. Um, and so eventually I left like doing that. The band lovely, uh, lovely disbanded in a wonderful, mutual way yeah. um a lot of them play in my band now because i have a band that i play with sometimes uh but i was like i'm gonna try this hip-hop thing i like doing it i used to write raps literally just to get my creative juices flowing okay. because it's a great writing exercise if you're like a writer um so i just did, did, started to doing that and then i was like well i'll just put these to music you know and i did and i started going to the open mics uh, shout out again 995.3 and yeah, I just they, I won a lot. I think it was because I had eight years of performing under my belt. Because again, when it comes down to it, like you can be the second best art like rapper in a room, but if you're the first best performer, no one's gonna care. Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? Like it's just it, it, it what it is. There's a lot of times I won by just pure personality. Yeah. You know, when there are other lyricists way better than me in the room. Were those like 10 minute sets of all your own music? So it or would be like, like? you do a song and okay. then you'd have a group of judges from both the community and like the music industry at large that would come and judge. Oh. And then every night the winner would 
would just be picked by the judges and then that's how you do it and after i won four times in a row they were like hey you can't can't come back <laughs> but that and was I, all original music yeah yep, my stuff forming yeah yep, cool. my stuff and yeah. then after that <laughs> the radio same radio station asked me to perform at a, a festival called Soundset. yeah yep. dude that's what i was saying about reverb though earlier of like yep. we don't have a hip-hop festival yep. anywhere around here because sound set's not there anymore it's not there anymore so now so that i was at the at the the last three years of Soundset, I was one of those oh, cool. performers, and I got to perform. It was the same bill as it was the Migos bill. Uh, it was 2018, right? Yeah, 2018. So it was Wu Tang, Wu -Tang Erica Badu, Erica Badu wow. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tyler Creator was there. Yep, Feral Mons. Yeah, yeah. So it was a really, it was a really great, uh, really great festival. Um, they had called me up. It was like, hey, do you want to do this? Like you were winning a bunch. Like, do you want to do it? And at that time, I didn't even have four songs. Oh god. Because <laughs> I had been doing the same three over and over again, yeah, just because yeah. I knew them, and so I wrote a whole album like worth of songs in like a weekend and then i went and did a uh, sound set sophia eras uh lizzo's dj was the one who spun my tracks i didn't have a dj at the time how much time did you you said you did that in a week yep. but it like you learned to perform all that within a week what yeah. was the time frame between that phone call and sound set it was i remember i remember this like because it was the biggest phone call in my life because i got it i'm sitting here answering phones for the call center i'm working at my phone rings and pick it up <laughs> hey do you want to do probably one of the biggest things you've ever done yeah. in your your short career and i said yeah it was a wednesday and um it was three weeks oh. no no yeah it was it was like three weeks before the things so it was a wednesday and so i wrote five songs over the weekend and then by time to hit sunset i was ready to go wow it's because I just, I've done this, you know, I, I, yeah, sure. I, and also I did theater in high school and college. I did improv in high school and college. And I know those things sometimes don't seem like a hip hop thing to do. Well, it's public speaking, but though. it's public speaking. Yeah. It's performing. It's on the fly. Sure. Like you're like, if things don't go exactly the way that you're, you expected it to go, you're not completely flustered. And having done eight years of just failing at one music yeah. thing, I knew all the things that I wanted to do and I didn't have any ego about it because I was just like, yo, if this is another thing that just doesn't hit, then maybe I'm just not good at this. Sure. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it wasn't yeah. like a, I didn't internalize it. I just went out and had fun um, because but that I was, was like, got to be by far the biggest crowd. I mean, the, the oh, crowd yeah. at Soundset, it how many thousands. attendees? It was thousands and thousands. I, I was going to say like, tens of thousands. Yeah. Probably, it's right? crazy. I don't know how many people. And I before that, you get like 20, 30. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And yeah. your biggest before that was probably 100? Oh, <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> maybe Wait, like for the rock band. Uh, no, oh, for the rock band. You no, never broke no I think the oh for my rock band. I think the biggest thing I'd ever done as a rock band. I opened for Switchfoot. Okay, and I was in a. I was playing keys and, and just. That was the biggest thing I'd ever. Yeah, done but you're not point. the front and center. But I wasn't the front and center there. That yeah. Yeah. And so, um, the biggest crowd I had before that was maybe two hundred people. Maybe sure. yeah. like if I'm if I was being generous, yeah. like maybe about two hundred people, and then Soundset was like thirty thousand. Wow! <laughs> How did that performance go? Was Great. it like you had that, and you're like, well, cool. I guess this is the rest. When of my life. I finished, uh, when I finished my set, and I just realized I looked out like midway through, I looked at all these people, and I was like, oh, I could do this for the rest of my life. Yeah. Like, oh, this is it. Like, oh, there's something here because people aren't leaving. Like, Didn't somebody come up to you, too? And they were like, I was like, going to go see Wu-Tang Clan, but I heard you, so I just came here. It was the <laughs> wildest compliment I had ever gotten up until that point. I still think they were wrong to do it. You were but, performing <laughs> at the same time as Wu-Tang? Yeah, like Wu-Tang was like on one stage, I'm on the other. And, and people watched People you. were like, well, let's go listen to this guy. And I was wow. just like, you shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's but wrong, that's, but thank that's you. high praise, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I would say crazy. so. But it was but like again it's a lot of a people are looking for new stuff yeah. always at these festivals that's what people are looking for there they're coming to these big festivals to see what's new uh the midwest doesn't get to break a lot of people yeah. it's just not our culture over here unfortunately it's not our culture over here so but when people do hear something new and fresh the real ones they want to experience it yeah. so like it was a, like that was a really high praise and from that moment on it was it had just been you know, strength after strength after strength. I kept winning stuff and awards, and, and people were saying very nice things to me. Um, up until now, I mean, there was a little bit in 2020 where we all were like right. in our rooms, but <laughs> outside of that, like it had been just like this. Yeah, no, he was as as soon as he started, it was like very clear 
that you were going to be successful in this because you got i mean a a, a a spot on sound set is something that a minneapolis artist might try to get for 15 years of hard yeah. work and never get it mm-hmm. yeah you know what i mean i know people who have been going hard for 10 years yep. and never got it yep. well, yeah that's a, by far the biggest hip-hop festival anywhere in the midwest it within, was. yeah within it was, six yeah. months of of giving it a try <laughs> yeah, say. so did you quit your call center job right oh after that weekend? i did not after that <laughs> weekend but it was a little bit of time I, you know, was working and doing gigs and kind of showing up whenever someone would let me. If I had a mic, I could, if I, you gave me a mic and a spot, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, I was playing at, like, we were playing at breweries and. We've done so much weird stuff. Yeah, like weird, like professional wrestling shows and, and like bake sales and graduation parties. I was like, yo, anything that yep. has people at it, please put me in front of them because I will, I will get them if you let me. Yeah. And so we did that and. Yeah, I, I remember quitting my job. I remember that 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 lovely feeling. Yeah. I just you know, swiping out for the last time, being like, "You'll never see me again." It was November nineteenth of uh, twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So right a great time, COVID. a great yeah. time to quit your uh, medical insurance giving job. I was like, but I I remember I I may or may not have done something. Uh, to people I did not like as I left. And then, yeah. because I don't know who's going to watch this. And <laughs> um, I, you know, put, I bet on myself. Yeah. Which was, it's crazy and was wild, but it's worked yeah. since then. And now you know, I do music full time. That's what we do. We do this full time. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, my you'll appreciate this because you're a nerd, obviously. Yep. Uh, my last job, you don't appreciate that was Verizon, but um, I opened my skateboard shop in April 11th, 2014, which yeah. I just finally closed down, which was, it was, it was a happy thing. Yeah, it was yeah. like 10 years of my life. I was ready to shut the chapter. But yeah. I remember I went to anime detour. Uh, I used to go to that every year and yeah, like cosplay nice. and everything. Nice. Um, yeah. I did Conquer one year. From, oh, what up? Yeah. From Naruto. Yeah. So anyways, I <laughs> like, I remember clocking out for the last time on like the Thursday at Verizon. Um, and then I, I like deleted social media off my phone yeah. for the weekend. And I was like, I'm just like full in. Cause from Jan, I got the keys for my spot in January and I was working 40 hours a week at Verizon. Yeah. And then, uh, I used to be the assistant manager at Hellsberg diamonds in the mall. So uh. I would work like open to close on one of my days off. Yeah. And then my last day off, I was getting my store ready that whole time. Oh wow. But like clocking out that last time at Verizon also meant I was done at Hellsberg and it was like, yeah. I'm never going to work for anyone else the rest of my life. Let me go party with all these nerds. And then like, it's go time. Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. the energy. It's I so love hard that. to go back. It is actually it's during, a, we both got jobs during COVID like yeah. part-time jobs. And I think you I were was, at yours for what, two weeks and you just stopped going. No, that's not, no, I went. <laughs> I, so hold on. I worked at a place called love sack for about like five. Oh, months. I was talking about the Walgreens. <laughs> but the Walgreens. Yeah. I went like, I went to the, I walked into Walgreens and, and this is not a hate on all Walgreens. By the way, love sack seems like the perfect place for you. You would think, you would think, <laughs> Those but are I was, comfortable. At, I was at, I was at the Walgreens. I worked there for two days. Yeah. I worked there for two days and I said, I can't. He picked, he picked me up for a live stream gig and he goes, I just don't think I'm gonna go back. I'm not even gonna tell I'll just, anybody. I will I'm just gonna and they never called either. It yeah. was clear that they were like, "Yeah, this is. Yeah. You're not gonna like this." And I was like, "Man," because once you live your dream, when you get a taste of your dream, yeah. it is really hard to go back. I did eventually get, like I said, I started working at Love Sack just because it's responsible to be able to pay your bills, to pay you know the mm. people that you're supposed to do all that stuff. It's a cool thing to do. But like I was, this was it was always temporary. Because I said to myself, what I'm, do- what I'm doing is music. Now, if I had to go back and get a job tomorrow, if it meant I could do music for another five years, I'd do it. Yeah. Because the most important thing is, is to get back on that stage. Right. If it means I have to get a job for a couple months to do that, I'll do it. Um, I'm in a wonderful position where right now I can just make music, do content, go out to fun stuff like this. Um, and it's because of the fans, which is why I love connecting with people so much. Yeah. Because it's like, you're paying my bills. I am down to talk. Quite literally. Yeah. You pay yeah. for my rent. Yeah. Like, I, have, yeah. I, I, I never got the too cool celebrity bit. Dude, it's I don't, not, I don't, I don't understand it. I don't think it's it whack. works, right? It, because like, there's uh, your like core fan base. Yeah, like they're not necessarily going to be the coolest people you've ever met from no. like a standpoint of like, what are their social media numbers? What do they do? Yeah. But mm-hmm. I think they're the coolest people in the world because they appreciate what I do or exactly. what you do, and they're the ones who are telling everybody else about what you do. Like, yeah. it's one thing to advertise and show like your yeah. stuff and people discover it. It's another thing when they hear from their friend genuinely, like not on unbi- not biased yeah. at all, like. 
this dude rules. And that's you need the realist, and that's who comes and buys a ticket. Yeah, exactly. That's or buys the merch. Yeah, yeah or... buys the merch. Like, cause like you can listen to a song on TikTok. Oh, that's fun, and you will never care about that artist. Mm -hmm. You'll just be like, that's a good hook. Yeah, yep. and you'll like the hook, and you'll hear it, and you'll think about it, and boom. But if your friends like, yo, I saw X Y Z, they performed at this venue, and it was one of the best concerts I've ever seen. Next time that person's in town, you might consider buying a ticket, or they might get a ticket for you. Yeah. And now you're both the amount of people who've come and say, like, I brought all of my friends to see you. Yeah, um, is infinitely more uh, valuable to me than someone just like. If I got thirty likes on a video, well, because yeah. like music is a is a service and not a product anymore. So you're really selling. You're not necessarily even selling your music. You're selling who you are to people. People mm -hmm. want to be a part of something with somebody who they trust and feel safe around. Facts. I think somebody yeah. who would, they would they would have no problem having over in their like living room. That's, somebody they would want to come over to their living yeah. room. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. Exactly. And now there's like you know there's there's holdouts from the era of cool. Yeah. I think that's we're we're in a transition period. Yeah. So we're gonna you see celebrities that are super cool and too cool to be talked to and stuff like that. Because that was how you had to be in order to make things happen at one point. So there is we're in a crossover time period yeah. where you have more personable super celebrities like yeah. are becoming more and more regular. Yeah. Being like, Yeah, no, I'm I'm just like a I'm just me because it's right. like it's like this you know what i mean we're at the middle point of that well people used to have like their their management everybody have a whole branding behind what their yeah. persona was yeah and they kind of had to fit whatever that persona was versus yeah. nowadays a lot of people they just want to be as genuine as possible and mm -hmm. i think people like when the artist that they like is relatable i think so you know too. what i mean and, and real well yeah and I mean, real people are over i feel like people are kind of over the whole persona thing I think so. Just I like mean, be yourself. I think like or be one hundred percent a persona and make it clear that there's like a, a character you're doing. Yeah, and yeah, like who you are. yeah. But I mean, if you look at like Saturday Night Live, I think that's one of the reasons that um, people love that so much is when yeah. you have somebody like Justin Timberlake or whatever, like yeah. just pull, pulling him out. You have somebody who doesn't cool guy it. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Who mm. does not have to do that, but chooses to yeah. make fun of themselves, laugh at themselves, and be like real like that. Yeah, I think people really like that. I remember when was it. Uh, who was the guy from Meet the Fockers? What's the what's the old man? Ben Stiller? Uh, the old guy. Uh, oh, Robert De Niro. Robert yeah, De, Niro. De Niro. I remember when he was on SNL and he was like, hey, I'm on SNL. Hopefully this is going to really skyrocket my career. I laughed my ass off. Yeah, but people love that with like, like hot ones yeah, or like any of these other like, things. Yeah, they, right? Like not taking themselves too seriously, like right. allowing it. Because we're a product. Right. I'm rhyming for money. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like. The way I always look at it is like, hey, everybody has one thing they're really good at. Yeah. <laughs> and you just have like a different thing you're really good at. It's yeah. weird to act better than Yeah, people. better than other people <laughs> at it. Yo, I've seen, yeah. I've hung out with the world record holder for single person puzzling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I've, I've, I know people who could do really dope stuff and they don't have to be a dick about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I don't know. Like, yeah, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be any. <laughs> Gonna be more tiggish because I can rap really good. Like no, like yeah. that's just something I do that's really well. Yeah. Thankfully, it makes me a lot of money. But like, I can just be cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about not the money, but let's talk about where we're at within the career paths, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I just and I've been working for myself since 2014, so it's not like it's totally changed. But I closed my retail store, which now opens up the freedom for me to work from wherever, and yeah. it really does open a lot of doors for my show as far as how much time and energy can go into the different things, which I'm really excited about. Thanks. So it's like I'm at the low point financially necessarily at it, but I'm at, at the point financially where like I'm all right. Yeah. And it's only going to go up from here with like time, attention, everything I can put into it. Yeah. With you guys, kind of where are you at? Are you traveling all over the country right now pretty consistently? Are you trying to do more international stuff? Are you working on like an album that's going to come out soon? Yeah. I mean, at? like, tell them about your producer record. Oh, yeah. So I have a record coming out uh, this fall called The uh, Barback Volume One. It's a new series I'm starting, just a little five packs of. Uh, I like to, I always, anytime I work with an artist in the studio, I always hear them over different production than what they hear themselves over. Yeah. I'm always like, oh, you should, you should use this beat. And they're like, no, nah, I'm not really feeling it, but I'm like, you would sound so good on it. And they don't yeah. use it. Right. So I, I, I sent out beats to these artists that are like kind of what they normally do, but mostly not mostly yeah. like what I, how I hear them. Okay. Um, to try to pull them out of their comfort zone. And the idea is to make a, a record series that is all of these artists people know, but in ways I've never heard them before. Mm. That's genius, dude. It's kind of like what why Tiny Desk is so big, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So that's it's kind of like that vibe, and so 
Yep, that's coming out in uh, in in the fall. In this fall, I haven't picked a date yet, but uh, okay, cool. we're getting everything together. But yeah, it's coming out this fall. There's some artists on there. Uh, Minnesota, shout out Minnesota. Shout out Minnesota. Minneapolis, Drew, NDO, yeah. Nerdies on there. What? Yari, me. Wow. Cool. So yeah, shout out Yari. There's a lot of people coming out of Minneapolis right now. Yo, there we're, are a lot we of are. People. Minneapolis is hot. Yes. Yeah, people don't know. There's so many talented artists there, and most of the people you hear of are not the artists I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm saying that for real. Yeah. Like Minnesota's got so many dope talent. Yeah. It's just it's crazy. And and a diverse talent too. There's like yeah. so many people. You're gonna hear like Kaylea Universe tonight. Like mm-hmm. she, you know, she's killing it. And she's like a powerful Hmong artist. It's like it's a lot of cool stuff. And yeah. like you hear so many different diversity, like different people out here. So Minnesota's got something. Yeah. Yeah, we for sure. Taken. And like, I'm excited because I get to do more stuff. We'll be traveling more and more as the years gone on. Right now, we kind of start we're touring regularly. But this is just a one off. This is a not in the middle of a tour. No, right? this no. is a one off. This is yep. just us coming out to show love to Pelly. Yeah, and this is okay. them hitting them up like, hey, you want to come do this with us? Like, sure. Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. yeah this is just the love. But like, yeah. we're everywhere. Um, we're trying to hit more spots. I know one of the things we really want to do is hit the West Coast. We did an East Coast tour mm-hmm. uh, last year. Cool. Um, so we were we were on the east side of the country, and now we want to hit the the west side of the country and do some stuff over there. Um, we have done stuff. We did one thing overseas. It wasn't necessarily just purely hip hop. We worked uh, for we did a Hasbro event in, in, in so London, we England. We threw for a D and D game in a castle. <laughs> yeah, because we do we do that stuff. Yeah. Uh, that was a lot of fun and, and the table. We and we worked in hip hop at the in the in the thing. So that was a lot of fun. So we kind of go everywhere and do everything. Sure. Um, so we're trying to expand. We're in our expansion phase, and we yeah. might have some new. There might be some yeah. new stuff out. Just open you know? a studio. Oh, we, yeah. yeah. Talk They're, about that. To like record with other people. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah so yeah. I, it's uh, myself. Uh, we just brought in another uh, engineer and producer, Buck. Um, and we're, uh, yeah, we're a recording studio and production studio in wow. Minneapolis. And yep. We're ju- the whole goal is to be more approachable, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause nowadays, financially and then also just socially. Yeah. Yes. Because nowadays like s- studios are so expensive mm-hmm. Yeah. to the point where like the studios are actually hurting because people are just like, well, I'll just get a focus. Right. And yeah, go dude. home. You yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. spent 200 bucks on the app store and get logic and I'm good. Yeah. You know, which fair. I wouldn't for $200 an hour versus $200 one time. Why wouldn't you? Right. Yeah. Mm. Um, well, there's so, a certain level of investment. Like people yeah. aren't ready to make until they're making money doing these yeah, shows exactly. or whatever. And mm-hmm. like a lot of people aren't in that position yet. And so yep. we're trying to, uh, the goal is to build a studio that is that level. Sure. But approachable for the people who aren't there financially yet yeah Mm. so just kind of it's just like another way like we're like he said before we're super big on community and uh providing things as our success comes and as more money comes in like using that to provide things for the other people around us to also benefit off yeah. of. Yeah. Well, and you guys are in a perfect position where you actually get to know a lot of these people ahead of time. Yeah. Because I'm sure it sucks to sign up to like do this project with somebody and then you don't know them until you get in there with them and yeah. then you got to spend all this time. However, you guys are yeah. at all these shows. You yeah. already know all these artists. So it's kind of like a... It is true, yeah. You know, we're hanging out. Like this would make sense for us to do this and this exactly. is my schedule and it just works, right? Yep. That's kind of how it clicks. So yeah. uh, for you though, there's people don't really put out a lot of albums and I get why. And even when they do their EPs mm-hmm. usually, and again, yep. I totally understand why. When I interviewed Cash Nova a long time ago, he was oh, just yeah. basically saying like, if you can have something come out every month, like that's a better way rather than having, and even when his album at the time, um, High Speed Cash was coming out, he was like, I'm just dropping each single though, like each mm-hmm. month. And then the whole thing will come out, but really it's like each month the song is coming yeah. out. And I feel like that's more so the strategy nowadays. Is that kind of how you're going about it? See, here's, I, I'm an old school with it which yeah. is weird. I like an album drop. I like not hearing everything. All at once I like to get in and discover it. You find a couple of tracks that you really, that you know that are gonna connect with the public or you really know that are gonna sell the project as a whole. Yeah. And then you bring them in to listen to the whole thing. I, I Ryan will tell you like, Hazel, <laughs> Hazel will tell you, I'm, uh, I'm a little weird when it comes to my uh, releases. I like that feeling of yeah. like, what's going to be on the album. I can't wait to hear the rest of it. Yeah. Um, and I've never put out anything with less than 10, ten. tracks on it. No, that's the Oh, smallest. wow. Yeah, I just, yeah, we have nine albums out right now. Mm-hmm. Two that's of, a lot of music. Yep. Nine albums out right now. Yep. One of them is 20 tracks. One of them is 20 so tracks. So we're over 100 tracks on stream. Yeah, and that's without the singles. That's literally just yep. like full projects. And the thing is that like 
uh, quality is important. Quantity is important too. Like mm-hmm. I like to give people like a, a an album that they can listen to that's more than just a drive to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I want I want you to be able to be like, yo, I it's a whole like I can schedule this. I'll listen to it um, because again. I want to get you what you paid for. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Sometimes we do projects, which is like, like just for fun. We're probably the last time we did yeah. it where it's just like, this is like a bunch of singles wrapped They're up. Mix under tapes, one and that's yeah. what a mixtape yeah. is to me. Yep. A mixtape is like, Hey, I have 12 songs that are not really connected by like a common theme, yeah. but, they're just like fun but to do. But I think do. you just learn so much conceptual that, records. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's that, my that's my jam. I think like, and when you're talking about quantity over quality or quality, but like you have to have both, right? Everything's yeah. a spectrum. You have to yeah. put a certain amount of time and energy into whatever. Mm-hmm. But you learn so much through the process of making something, even if it doesn't turn out like what you want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're gonna you're going to progress a lot throughout that time frame. So I think it is really important to put out a ton of music. Even exactly. and you don't have to like each song or each thing you put out doesn't have to be your favorite thing you've ever made. No. You know what and I mean? that's what lyric videos are so great. Yeah. Cuz you can still have visual content. Yeah, sure. You don't have to go through and put like a whole music video together. Right. You can just sit down and just like put some words in front of a screen. And the more music you put out, the more range you can show. Yeah. yeah. Which if you're trying to go the industry route, you're trying to get a label deal if that's what your end goal is, your mm-hmm. end game they want to see that you can do anything anything yeah so that if the market switches up and they need you to just write a different type of song they know you can just do that yeah Mm -hmm. totally well i know you guys don't have a ton more time because we did talk for longer than i initially told you (laughs) sometimes we just keep chatting (laughs) yeah yeah and i I would love to do another interview at some point i could drive out towards minneapolis i want to go i'm gonna hopefully go to the james g show that's coming up he's a homie of mine you know him the the healy guy yeah Yeah. he's got a headlining set his first one in minneapolis yes september 14th i know so i'm I'm aware yeah i'm trying to pop out hopefully you guys will be there but in general i'd like to come out and we can do another one i like to ask everyone on every episode to share a story of unique experience experience that they had that they're really grateful for but it only happened because they pursued their passion Ooh. can you think of something because we do it not for the money right we do it for these other yeah. experiences such as sound set and that's why it's worth mm. not making a lot of money that's why it's worth potentially having a job to help float it what's one you can think of a unique experience where i was pursuing my passion and i got to experience because i wasn't making but it wasn't about the money. Yeah. So one example for me was I, and just way early on, um, I was driving out to Seattle and I was just sending DMs to people like, oh, this would be cool to interview this person. And Cashanova was the first person I was actually like a fan of that oh, yeah. I ended up interviewing. And I just like DM'd him like, hey, what do you think about blah, blah, blah? Cause I liked him on some of the prof music and his own mm-hmm. things. And then I woke up, was drinking my coffee and had a DM from him when I was out in Seattle that was like, yeah, that sounds fun. Sick, dude. Yeah. And then, like, so- shortly after that, I interviewed him in Minneapolis. And for me, especially that early on at the time, was like, wow, this was dope. I spent my own money definitely driving out to Minneapolis. Didn't make money doing that. But that yeah. was really cool for me. Yeah. I I, I have one. Do you have one? I do. It's kind of it, it's kind of like a, a, a hindsight one. Oh, hit. Um, I There was a moment where he started clicking and he was getting picked up for some tours and uh we had a phone call oh yeah you remember this phone call where i was like okay because he was quitting his job we're getting busy enough where i'm having to find a new job every two three months because i'm just walking out if they tell me i can't (laughs) get the night off for a show i just leave yeah you gotta prioritize yeah yeah so i (laughs) yeah yeah so i'm getting a new job like every two three months so i'm starting to be like okay i might have to consider doing a full-time run at this i talked to him and i'm like hey like because i have a bunch of other dj homies in minnesota at the time and they were all like hey man like watch your own back because these artists tend to just like drop you as a dj as soon as they get some money and so i which is still the plan i just don't have (laughs) just so everybody's aware (laughs) uh and so i talked to him and i was like hey like you know am i gonna like how how long do you see this relationship working out? And he was basically like, as far as I'm concerned, you could be my DJ for as long as you want to be. Same. And I was like, he was like, if you quit your job right now, I promise I won't let you, yeah. I won't let you like die. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right. And like looking back at it now, I was like, I'm so glad I did that because uh, just I'm so more involved than I initially was. Mm. It was initially just like, pull up to the show you got the tracks cool you know what the set is all right we're gonna go but now i'm in the studio making the music with them i'm in the you know Mm -hmm. i'm 
I, uh, and uh, it's honestly, it's the best time I've ever had in my life, and I'm so glad that I, I just decided to jump off that that ledge with you. <laughs> yeah, no, it was. It really was. Yeah, there was no guarantee. No, at there that was time. no net. There was no net. We it just was, are you gonna grow wings on the way down, or are you gonna like, hit the earth? <laughs> or gonna look, yeah, you know, yeah. or bounce real quick. Yeah, like full Luffy style. Like we had to figure it out. I think. I mean, just that leap of faith is a big one. I think for me, there was this like, thing that came to my mind was um, I was offered a show with uh an artist that i didn't connect with morally like i I didn't i didn't like their uh their Mm. their stance and this was a bigger artist bigger than me and still is uh bigger than me um but i had known them and i and i had worked with them before but sent things have come out you know and they offered me this show and they're like don't worry no one's even gonna promote that like i'm gonna be there and and i was just like Okay, I could say yes, um, you know, take the check, you know, just shake the hands and hope that it doesn't get out. You know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of times that's what you do. You, 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 you're like, okay, you know, whatever. But I was like, you know what, Matt? Like, you don't really want to do that. And, it's, and money is it's not about the money. You right. know what I mean? Because you can make the money. So I said no. Uh, they did not take it well because um, I was just like, hey, like. Could you, you at said least? Why. I yeah. said, I was like, hey, this is what's going on. And if you could talk to me about it, maybe I could like have a better understanding so then I could like have some right. foot, you know, place to stand on. And they didn't, they had it, they wanted none of it. And so they just were like, whatever. And I felt really bad about it. But then the next day I get a call and it's Ludacris's team. Whoa. And they wanted me to open for them at Mystic Lake, uh, which is a, a place by, in Minnesota. Yeah. Same day. Same wow. day of that other show, same time, mm-hmm. and not, and it was, and I will say it was more money, but I didn't know that at the time when I said when I right. said no to the other person, and I didn't know this show wasn't like waiting in the wings or anything. Right. It just literally just. It's came just that kind of desk. like proof in the pudding of just yeah. like there's value in moving with integrity, yeah, and yeah. morals, and, and so it was industry. it was powerful for me because I was like. This was this was one of those industry things, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Are you going to? You know, turn the other way yeah. while the big wigs do X, Y, Z, or are you gonna try to do this music thing a little bit differently? And you know, I stuck to my guns and I and I took that leap and I was like, no, you know what? I'll let my talent make my way. And if if I never get asked, you know, if I get blacklisted because I snubbed you or whatever, then it is what it is. Yeah. Um, and then here I got this massive opportunity mm-hmm. with one of the greatest hip hop acts to be breathing. Yeah. And so that was just like I don't know. That that was my like I followed my passion, I followed my dream, my morals, and it worked out. Yeah. You know, in a profound way, people still talk to me about that. I, they're like, I'm sure. They're like, oh wow, but that's we that's like when a, we saw you. Like, we had like a three hour conversation about it because we were in Indianapolis yeah, yeah, when you when, got that when email, I, and we had like wow. a three hour conversation about like, I don't think we could do this. Show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it, we can't say all the things we've been saying and then also do this show. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Like you can, we can, you know, you have to live. You have to walk it how you talk it. You know what I mean? After yeah. a certain point in time, we all love doing the right thing saying the right thing you know what i mean there's you know all the yeah. all the things uh but it's one thing to talk about it or to post about it it's another thing to have that be a backbone of your career yeah um and it's not always positive and it doesn't always get you to it win mostly it only costs you money it mostly <laughs> only costs you money but but i mean when you know what you were talking about earlier about like building your fan base with people that like the genuine you exactly those people will see through that and they'll lose a lot of respect for you yeah it, I, I say so. all the time it's like there are a lot of people especially in Minnesota where we've experienced, but in, in, in across the music industry as a whole, there was such a long time where people shaved off parts of themselves to fit through yeah. the, the small narrow door that like the people in charge were like holding open. Yeah. They're like, you have to change yourself to fit through this. And now with the expansion of technology and then just the general cultural shift in what's important to people, there is less of a need to do that. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not saying that everybody who's ever like ever compromised himself is beyond redemption. But what I'm saying is that like now we live in a world where if you're an artist and what you're what you're trying to get people to see is the real you and what you believe in is xyz move that way yeah just move that way your people the other the people out there who are consuming whatever it is you're creating and think that same thing they'll find you facts 
and they'll and they'll they'll and follow you forever. They'll, they'll be the most be loyal the fan base you've yeah, ever had. They'll be the ones like you, yeah. like casual. It, it's different. It's like fast food and a home cooked meal. Mm-hmm, you know yeah. what I mean? Like you'll get a home cooked meal type of crowd yeah. that will come and you will be fed and you will be full, mm-hmm. both financially, spiritually, like all the things you need on that stage. You'll get because you know that the people on the other side of the stage from you, they believe in you yeah. and you've proven you've earned that. It's 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 uh, humbling and it's hard, but uh, it's I don't know. I think it's better, dude. I think just one of the best pieces of advice I always give everybody is you just always play the long game, always. Facts. We we talk about that all the time. Anytime there's a hard decision, it's mm. okay. In 20 years, do I still want to be doing this? Mm-hmm. Like if I do this now and now I'm gonna have to do that forever, do I still want to be doing that in 20 years? Yep. Yeah, yeah. If the answer is that. no, then mm-hmm. I'm just walking away now. Yep. Yeah. Well, dude, I'm so stoked I got to meet and hang this out with dope. you guys. This was really fun. Yeah, yeah, thanks yeah. for having yeah. us. I, I we just kind of showed up and walked yeah. around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but just I just love how you carried the, carried the energy, man. Yeah. You guys are you guys are awesome to be around. This was really fun. I'm Thank excited you. to see some of the show, but oh, I want to yeah. see like an actual like full show. Oh of yeah, yours you gotta come out and check come out, out some. Minnesota's not that far away. It's not. I'll I'll make the trek out there. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.